Today, you'll meet Ali Sheva Hudson, who has been a documentary filmmaker for over 15 years. She has done work across the globe in both the promotional and documentary spheres, and after receiving her master's, she came to Israel and created Hudson Films, her own company. She is passionate about bringing a more authentic and story-driven approach to the promotional film world and breaking down how we interact with our audiences. Enjoy. Welcome to Realizing Potential, where we explore self-actualization through the journeys, perspectives, and transformative insights of Jewish leaders across the globe. Okay. Hello, Ali Sheva Hudson. It is great to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So I I want to start off with you telling the audience, um, our students, alumni, supporters, who you are today and what you spend your time doing. Uh, so, hi, I'm Ali Sheva. Um, who I am today. So I live in Israel. Uh, I have three young kids, ages almost six, almost five, and three. Been here about 10 years. Um, and I work, I run my own business uh, doing uh, promotional videos for nonprofits, uh, businesses, entrepreneurs, um, helping them get their story out to the world in a way that grows their business or their mission or their initiative and that sort of thing. Amazing. So I don't know if this is a fair statement, but would you say this is your true calling? And if it is, how did you discover for yourself that this is what you wanted to do to help people tell their stories through video? Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, it's a really good question. It, it, it's a good question for myself. Like, is this my true calling? Um, I think I asked myself that a lot in terms of the work that I'm doing. Just, you know, being self-reflective and thinking like, first of all, it's just very interesting, the journey that I've been on. And also thinking about like, is this exactly what I'm supposed to be doing? So I studied film. A lot of people in my field don't necessarily study film. They're self-taught. It's more common to be self-taught these days, but okay. I I actually studied film and filmmaking and I focused in documentary filmmaking. So um, actually I was studying documentary when I became involved in Moor, um, but it was more long form documentary with a lot of, you know, like social justice warriors. We had a center for environmental filmmaking and that sort of thing. And the aspect of, I guess, documentary filmmaking that really spoke to me is A, I really loved the idea of telling true, real stories. I was always like, why are we writing stories? There's so many interesting ones that are already out there. And I also felt with documentary that there was this ability to kind of educate, to help to improve. Of course, you have that ability with uh, fiction films and other mediums as well. But just for me, I kind of felt like it even has this like even more of a potential to not simply entertain people but also to do something with. I didn't know what that thing is that I wanted to do, but I felt like, okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, Then as time went on through the years, so I took a bit of a break from that. I I dealt more into sort of like my Jewish journey, you could say, and then coming to Israel and, uh, you know, deciding to stay in Israel and all of that. Um, And as time went on, you know, I really missed, filmmaking. I really miss these other aspects of it. And I was starting to look for a way to kind of combine the two, like, okay, I'm this Jew, I'm living in Israel, this is what I'm doing. But at the same time, like, um, really bringing together this background that I have of filmmaking and wanting to do it. So when I first started kind of um, testing the waters, let's say, with my own business and started taking on filmmaking jobs, I took on any promotional, like any job I could find. Like, you want to pay me to do something that's generally in in my field, so I'll do it. And then over time, as I was starting to develop my business, I realized, wait, I do have this background in documentary. So let's take that documentary style and let's put it into the promotional film world because I still want to get paid for what I do. I'm not at the place where I can just make films and hope they make money later down the line. And that process of putting those two things together, I think really helped develop my business and helped grow it. So I guess like the long answer to your question in terms of like, am I doing my my true calling? I think it's a journey and we're always like, I'm always trying to continue on the way and really, you know, be self-reflexive and ask myself, okay, these type of projects, is this what I should be doing? And these type of projects, but 
thankfully, I have a lot of opportunity, especially working with a lot of nonprofits and in this sort of telling your story kind of space that I'm able to create a lot of films for really wonderful causes, help them raise money, help them grow um, and do that with the skills that I've been given, which, you know, I'm really, really grateful for. Amazing. It's very interesting because you've touched on a bunch of points and I just want to see if we can isolate each one. And I'd love to, just because it can help others who are hearing this for themselves. Sometimes we don't always know what our true calling is, but it feels like what you've just described are four different ingredients that um, maybe are coming together. And I just want to clarify on two sides. One side is on the video side of, of, of finding your ability to tell a story through video. The other is going to be about Israel and, and the Jewish aspect of it. But starting with the video, there's three aspects of, you know, there's the actual ability uh, to technically through video build a story, meaning there's all of the technical aspects of working with the equipment and, and, and understanding that aspect of it. There's your interest in the people themselves, right? And you're wanting to tell those stories and, and bring that out of mm -hmm. them. Um, when it comes to, when you say skills that you, you know, originally found meaningful um, or, or, or you originally found you had those skills and that was the direction you wanted to go, was there anything specific that told you that, that, you know, working with cameras mm -hmm. and the equipment and, and technically setting up frames of shots and like, how did you discover that even before you get into the meaning side? Of right. The side? It's very, it's very interesting. Cause I feel like, I mean, what we always compare ourselves to other people and who knows like what's normal. Right. But many people in my field, I already mentioned they're usually self-taught. And I also find that in my field, a lot of people start with photography and then they move on to filmmaking and then they move on. You know, there's lots of different aspects in the filmmaking process. You could sort of um, go in the direction of, but I do feel like mine is a little bit interesting. And I also had a journey with sort of um, coming to terms with like, am I creative and how creative I am and what my role is in, in all of this. In a way, like I'm not the type of person who I'll tell you like, oh, the age of six, I was camera, I was making videos all the time. Like it wasn't really like that for me. When I was growing up, the main thing that I did in middle school and in high school was theater. Um, my sister also did theater. She's an actress. Like, but most of what I did was more behind the scenes. So I would assist to direct some shows or I might be in charge of costumes or different things. I really enjoyed the whole process. And it was the only thing really in school that I actually liked. Um, I didn't like sports so much. I didn't like other things. I, I liked choir and theater. Um, but at the same time, I always knew I'm not really a performer. That's not really what I want to do. Uh, I'm not so comfortable with all of the attention. And I just knew I wasn't an actress. So after high school, when you're kind of like, okay, I need to go to college. I need to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, for, I don't know, like for some reason, film and television just seemed like the next step. It seemed like this is in the direction of all the ways that I've spent my years. Theater is the only thing that I like. But I knew like I'm not going to go on into theater. I can't tell you what it is, but it was like something was telling me that. So in my high school, we had one super basic film class. And he kind of learned just the process of like how to work on a team and put together an idea and edited and, you know, all this sort of thing. And so I enjoyed that enough. And so I was like, OK, I'll, I'll go on in this direction. But even with that, even going on and studying film at school, that also was a journey because it's such a it sounds very specific, but it actually is like for me, it was a very big wide world. Like, what am I going to do in the filmmaking, it felt like this very artistic, creative world that in many ways intimidated me because I didn't have a huge background in the actual filmmaking process. So I started off in television because it felt like, oh, this is felt less intimidating for some reason. And I did a lot of like live television at my college, um, news type stuff, uh, more like fast paced entertainment type of thing. And it was very fun. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot about um live television and working really hard and working really fast and all of that. But I had this sense like, is this what I really want to do with my life? Do I really just mm -hmm. want to like entertain people? Which there's nothing wrong with that. Like the news and journalism is a very important thing. I was working on the television aspect of it, the broadcasting and the putting it together. I just had this sense like, I don't know if this is really what I want to do. And so in that world, in the film and television world, when I started exploring it, 
I'm not sure what happened, but I came upon some like intro documentary courses. They were developing the documentary program at my school at the time. I started looking into it and I loved it for all those reasons that I already mentioned, which is like the educational aspect. I love telling real stories. And then as I got into practicing some short documentary films and working on the subject matter, I also really loved the process. So when sometimes like my experience was that when I worked on like, I don't know, a big fiction film set, a narrative film set, whatever you want to call it. Like a lot of times you're this like one person holding this one thing over here and no connection to the story and no connection to the process. But in documentary, or at least the, the project that I was working on, it's very small teams. Everyone's really a part of it. And not only that, but you really like see the story developing over time. You know, you're not filming things completely out of order and putting it together later. You're you're interviewing someone and seeing either their story develop over time or the images you put together, like the process of going from start to finish. So when I realized like it's not just intellectually that I really like the idea of what this type of um, medium does, but also I really enjoyed the process. Like it just spoke to me like both ways. I kind of felt like, oh, this is it. Now, that's not to say that I went on to be your traditional documentary filmmaker, because that's not exactly what I do today. But I think having that awareness always grounded me that, like, I don't know how, but I am going to implement this into my life to some degree um, as as I get older and as I develop my career. Incredible. So you already touched on the third and fourth piece, but the third piece is really the meaning aspect you talked about, like choosing which projects are important to you. And and you mentioned now like how that process is important to you, though it makes sense that the meaning would have to be there because if the process is painful because you don't believe in the meaning of the project, that could mm. be hard. Um, but I'd love to hear about about that experience for you, but also how you know moving to Israel and Judaism plugs into that because a lot of the times for many of our careers, we don't, there are two different worlds. There's like my Jewish journey and identity and and growth and whatever that looks like and then there's my and and that might be tied in with family and and things at home then there's my career which is like has nothing to do with my religion so to speak but for you it seems like you've integrated the two what was Mm. that like uh well you make it sound very simple but the process (laughs) to do it was not so simple um no so definitely like when so when i was in grad school that's when i started to become more jewishly connected Ma'or's vision is to create a vibrant Jewish future led by a new generation that is literate in Jewish wisdom, culture, and heritage, inspired by a deep personal identity, committed to strong Jewish values, and engaged in Jewish community, civic life, and support of Israel. You can find a link to donate in today's show notes or head to ma'or.org slash donate to help Ma'or inspire, educate, and empower the next generation of Jewish leaders. And it was after grad school that I decided, okay... I have a lot of Jewish learning that I want to catch up on. So I'm going to go to Israel for a short time and just get to the bottom of this, you know, whatever, kind of like work on that. And then as time went on, I extended the time and then I extended the time. And then I really went through this phase of sort of just like, I don't want to say cutting myself off, but I was like, I was not interested in work, was not interested in career development. I was just interested in my Jewish development. And looking back upon it, Um, I don't like to say that it was a mistake or anything like that. I think it's part of the process when you get into something that you become so immersed in it and you love it and it's wonderful and it's great. Um, But after a certain period of time, I did start to feel like, wait, okay, just because I took a break from that doesn't mean I want to like forget it altogether. And so it was this really interesting process where like slowly over time, I was like, okay, maybe I could bring that back into my life. I didn't mention this, but the first job that I, well, not the first one, but one of the first jobs that I had in Israel is I worked as a video editor for a company, an organization that does like Israel advocacy type of stuff. So it was a great job because it allowed me to come back into my career, but in a salary position, not in this, you know, very high pressure type of way. And I just focused on video editing. So that in another way was also like, it was, it was very good to focus on one thing, I would say, like, just get back into it fully. Over time, I started to, as I mentioned before, kind of like miss the the other aspects of the filmmaking process, which would led me to start to freelance and start to open my business and that sort of thing. But there was a lot for sure in my personal journey um, that was really difficult um, that like, 
how do I say this? Like um, when I was on my Jewish journey, kind of looking at the work I was doing and saying, is this the type of work that I want to do? Now, I already had those questions back before when I was looking at documentary versus other things and that sort of thing. But when I was in grad school, I was working on, uh, we had to do a thesis film. Um, and the thesis film that I made is I came to Israel and I spent like a summer here, not on any sort of program, just like on my own. And I made a film about Eritrean and Sudanese coming to Israel looking for refugee status. So they're not Jewish. They were people wanting refugee status. And it, it was at the time when I was filming it, it was a big deal because there was a lot of people in South Tel Aviv. There was a lot of difficulties with it. They didn't have anywhere to go. It was a big thing at the time. So I made this documentary about the difficulties with Israel as a Jewish state because they understand the plight of being refugees, but at the same time, they want to maintain their Jewish character and that sort of like tension that exists there. So as I was finishing this film, I was also connecting more to my Judaism and becoming more observant, becoming more religious. And I kind of felt like, wait, I have this film that I really like stand by. Like I believed in everything that I said in the film, but at the same time, I had the understanding that this film could be used to bring uh, more anti-Israel sentiment into the world. It could be used against the Jews in some way, against Israel in some way. Well, that I think was like one of my most challenging times in terms of like my career and mm -hmm. melding that with like my Jewish identity. And I went back and forth. I went to a bunch of different people. I had this rabbi look at it and this person look at it and I was asking people all the time. Really, I think, also, for me personally, I was not in as much of a self-assured and self-confident place. So I was also looking for validation in terms of like, what can I do and what can I do? Mm. Uh, but it was a very difficult thing. And ultimately, what I decided to do was not to put the film out into film festival. I show it to people. I don't know. Now it's like so outdated. It's like that film's probably like 15 years old. It probably looks like so old. But I would show it to people to give them a sense of like my abilities and what I could do. But ultimately, I decided not to put it out into the world. But it was a very difficult thing because I spent years sure. making this film. Um, I I stood by what I said in the film, but I totally understand why people who were, let's say, more conservative or more to the right of me or whatever it was at the time would um, not like the film, disagree with the film, not like that it was yeah. out there, that sort of thing. So that, I think, was like one of the most difficult things. Wow. Um, but there wasn't like one answer. It was like a process of going through it. Um of, you know, looking at it again, trying to figure out what to do with it again. And then it was very interesting that only, you know, let's say a year or two after that, however many years it was, getting a job then at a place that does Israel advocacy, kind of getting to see that there are potential for videos and films and all these sort of things, like um, on all sides of the spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be over here. Like it, it gave me that sense that there is opportunity and you can do it, but it may not look the way you thought it would look. It's a fascinating challenge that, that you went through. And it sounds like for that specific instance, you came to a clear decision that, that made sense. But what happened afterwards? Did you find it to be easier <laughs> to integrate the like your, your belief system in? Did you feel like there was a, a, a reason? I guess one of the, the biggest questions one might ask when hearing a story like that is like, well, but who's going to tell those stories? Did you find a way to resolve for yourself like what you wanted to spend your time doing as opposed mm -hmm. to what needed to happen in the world? There's sort of that right. personal like, who am I and what do I want to do as opposed to like what needs to be done? Well, How did you resolve that? So, yeah, you're asking like a really interesting, almost like two different part question, I would say. Um, I, I think that sometimes for, especially I'll just take it with people in filmmaking because that's like what I know in the industry I know. Sometimes you find that people come to filmmaking because they have specific stories they want to tell. I know someone who has a filmmaking kind of like business production company, whatever you want to call it, um, that tells the story of women and feminists and I don't know, just like women and women's stories. Because like she's very, <clears throat> she's very dedicated to being a feminist and telling women's stories. And so that was like her mission. And filmmaking is the way that she does that. But for me, I don't feel like I'm that type of person. Like, I've asked myself this question many times. Like, do I want to tell this story? Do I want to tell that story? Um, <clears throat> and I don't know that I'm necessarily a person that has, like, one type of story or one thing to tell. I'm passionate about filmmaking, and I'm passionate about telling people's stories, and I have certain things that I care about. 
I care about my own Jewish identity. I care about Israel. I care. There's lots of other issues as well that I care about. Um, but it's not necessarily like I have to tell one type of story. I, I think that filmmaking is a very powerful thing. And I'm always looking for either clients or people or organizations mm -hmm. whose values I align with so that I can, you know, through their prompt or, you know, through it is whatever they're trying to do, use filmmaking, which is a very powerful tool to be able to tell that. But I have found like there are kind of like two types of people and I tend to volunteer the other one. I don't need to tell one type of story. Obviously, I want the stories I tell to align with my values, but it's not necessarily like one type of thing. Um, so I don't know if that really like answers your yeah. question, but that like concept really came to mind when you were when you were asking me that. No, you, I totally hear I said those two questions and that definitely. definitely <laughs> it. Um, but I want to move on to a, a different question, which. Um, and maybe this could include some of the story of, of, of coming to Israel, but along the journey, you mentioned women in entrepreneurship and that, that type of women mm -hmm. empowerment. So I'd love to understand along the journey, if anything, because you're a woman entrepreneur, if there's anything in particular that empowered you on the journey. Um, but also if, if there's anything particularly Jewish, just because you chose to come to Israel and you've chose, chosen to go on that journey that, um, from, from the aspect of Jewish wisdom that really also contributed to your career on that side of your life? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's so funny. I feel like on the one hand, like living in Israel and just living this life, you're not always so aware of like the, the Jewish wisdom piece because I think there's so much of it. You're just living every single day. Like I just right. think like, oh, trying to be a good person and trying to do these things. I was even talking with a friend of mine before about like, you know, um, just kind of asking her like, oh, do you think like Jewish wisdom has informed your business? Whatever. She was bringing up all these things every, that she was saying. And I was like, oh, yeah, that and that. And I think that sometimes we don't stop to think about the ways in which we're trying to be good people, trying to do good things every day, trying to either grow our business or grow our organizations or, you know, do whatever it is we're doing, find our calling. We don't realize how much of um, that which we're using to sort of build ourselves is actually coming from Jewish wisdom. But it's very important to like actually stop and think this is not just like an idea that I came up with. This is not just like, you know, uh, it doesn't just happen to be, but so much of it comes from, I think, Jewish wisdom, but we just don't always stop to think about it. So that's like point one is that like, I think also living in Israel for, I, I don't know if everyone has this experience, but I definitely do that. You can forget that. Um, from time to time because it's just it's sort of like the life that we live um, mm -hmm. but in terms of like being a woman and running a business and maybe how that has come together yeah it was really interesting there are many I would say challenges that I face that you know um, first of all filmmaking it tends to be a very male driven field especially when it actually comes to running the camera there are plenty of like female film producers but I find it to be more male driven i also i think that it's much easier in israel but i also find that in certain circles um not super friendly to like all types of religious people so i definitely had to like work to kind of find my circles that like align with my values and i definitely have found that i think outside of israel maybe it would be a lot harder if i was doing this in america like you know there would be different challenges possibly but i think that could also be be a challenge as well um so i definitely had have had to work to be able to like find those circles that do align with my values um but at the end of the day you know this this is uh where i'm living so i could always compare it to oh it would be different here and it would be different here if it was like that sure. um so yeah so speaking of you know working with clients and and picking ones that that align who who has been your favorite client and why were they? Mm, let's see. Well, some of my favorite clients I um I think are ones that are like Jewish or Israeli based organization, but are located abroad, right? So there's a few that come to mind. I have I worked with one that was like the friends of Shari Tzedek Canada. So Shari Tzedek is a hospital here in Israel for people who don't know, and they have uh, organizations in Canada and America, that sort of thing, who fundraise for them. Um, so that is one. And there's another organization that comes to mind, which is the Israel Cancer Research Foundation. So again, they were located in Canada, but they fund Israeli researchers researching 
uh, cancer treatments and and that sort of thing. So, a I think I did I really enjoy working with them because they are Anglo, they are English speaking culturally. We're very similar, and they're also looking for someone on the ground here in Israel who could sort of mm. do the work and film things for them and that sort of thing. That's a, but b, um, they're just the really important causes that I felt like it's not just a question of enjoying the work itself, but I felt like it was very meaningful. Like we're, we're creating uh, films and stories about people who are developing cancer research and progress for people that are dealing with a horrible, deadly disease. Like it felt very important. This one story we told for the hospital foundation that I mentioned, the friends of Shari Zenek, we told the story of somebody, a child who made this miraculous recovery after he was in a car accident as a result of a terrorist attack. And it was really miraculous what had happened to him. So we told that story as a way to show the dedication of the pediatric ward within this hospital and that sort of thing. So I think it's it's really, really meaningful to me when not only do I get to do the type of medium that I love, which is more documentary style, interview-based, developing the story, that sort of thing, but it's also working towards a cause that, I believe in that's powerful helps Jews helps Israel helps people you know um when those things come together like you know uh it's really amazing awesome um it's really it's inspiring because you've you've dedicated yourself you found a space where you can really express yourself through your career and your skills Mm -hmm. but you've also found a space to integrate that with helping the world and 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 not having to have a dichotomy between those two things in your life Mm. Is there is there something in your life that inspired you to 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 step in and take responsibility like that and want to want to give back or is it just something you always wanted to do? So it's so funny. I don't think of myself as giving back. Like as long as I'm doing it, like I'm happy to work for initiatives that like are meaningful and powerful. But yeah, like I don't know. It's so interesting. I think of it. I tend to be in my life like a been pretty career driven. You know, I went to a school like far away from my home, and I was very into like. What am I going to do? Okay, it's filmmaking. And when I was there, like, what am I doing now? I didn't just go to undergrad, but I also went to grad school. Like, I feel like I've always had this, like, drive and desire for my career. And even now with my business, I'm always like, okay, what's the next step? And how am I developing more? And what am I doing more? So I've had that drive in me. And so I think that, you know, as much as it was, it felt normal and natural and healthy to take a break from it from a period of time when I was developing my sort of, like, Jewish identity, let's say. At the same time, I think it was always going to come back. There's no way you could just kind of like put that away and it's just going to like go away. For me, for me, I'm not saying that for everyone, but um, I think it was just always normal and natural for myself that it was going to come back. And so um, I don't think of what I do necessarily as, you know, like helping the world. Although when you put it that way, it's like, oh, it does sound cool that what I'm doing is helping the world. It is helping people. And I'm happy to, to do it in a way that does help people. But ultimately, like, it also comes from a place of just being motivated to use my skills um, in a way that, I don't know, that's funny, makes me feel better, makes me feel good, feels like I'm being productive. Sure. But also, you know, is, is something that the world needs um, in some way. So I feel like it comes from more from a drive. But of course, I could be driven to just make money and, you know. Um, that wouldn't may or may not necessarily be helping a ton of people if that's what I was doing. So it's just interesting yeah, to think about it. Even as you asked me, I'm like, I didn't think of it that way, but I guess it is. At any at any point, I mean, there's different levels of everything, but at the end of the day, you know, a person can have a career where the way they give back is donating and their career isn't mm-hmm. about that at all. And they make as much money as they can because that money is doing good. But for you, you've integrated the two. So I wasn't saying that anybody who's just making money, so to speak, and doesn't <laughs> find meaning in their career that they don't necessarily like, right, right. have meaning in their life, but it's it it clearly lights you up to talk about projects where you do find them meaningful because um, mm. it seems like you found the ability to to find that in your work. And I was just curious if there's anything, maybe I can ask it, you know, if there's anything about finding that meaning in your work when when it does mm. happen that's different for you than when you find work that doesn't necessarily have that spark in it. Yeah, it is really interesting when you put it that way. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's something that I think is difficult to describe 
but it is true. Like now I'm reflecting on like a few different projects that I've had in the past year or something like that. And there are definitely projects I've taken on that have been fun. They've been interesting. They've been engaging. Um, but it might be more along the lines of promoting a product or a business or something like that. And so while it was a challenge to create the film and do it in the best way possible, and I'm proud of the final product, it doesn't give me that same like wow feeling. Whereas like when I'm working for an organization that is really trying to change lives or they're really trying to help people um, and I get to be part of that process. I think that's why I love working with nonprofits so much um, is because it seems to really align there. Um, there is something there is something more to it. I get more excited about it and more engaged in it. Now, I don't do that strictly 100% all the time. Um just because there's reality of, you know, needing to take certain projects on and, you know, um, make a certain amount of income and, you know, so, um, that's helpful and valuable as well. Um, but yeah, there is something to those projects that feel really special and feel like, wow, not only do I get to um, utilize the skills I have, but do it in a way that helps people and make money for me and my yeah. family. Yeah, no, I think it's important for everybody to know, especially those that are not in their career yet listening to this but you know it's also important to make money because you can't do things that are meaningful if you don't have any money to win your family. <laughs> um, which is a reality we all like to deny when we're young but eventually it catches right. up and, and life catches i don't up. know if this is specific to just like creatives but i know in like the the creative space we're always talking about this you know some of us are motivated more by money and some of us are more motivated by the project itself and sure. the creative level at which you're doing but it's always this like interesting conversation i think at the end of the day at least at like the creative space that money is um even if it's something that you're not focused on i'm not entirely motivated by money but i understand like i have to make it in order you know that has to be a reality that i'm dealing with but Bringing that challenge into the mix, I think at the end of the day is more helpful than hurtful because it it has to, it makes you be strategic about like, okay, I do need to do certain things over here, but this is what I want to do. So how can I combine these two things? And ultimately, like, I think it then uh, benefit, you know, the business, the creative, whoever it is. Amazing. Great. Okay. Awesome. Well, I want to jump in that, that I appreciate that. that it's a, it's a really important uh, matter to get into for people because that that exact mm-hmm. balance is what we all deal with. Well, I want to jump into our 3D questions. And the first one is, what's your favorite piece of Jewish w- Jewish wisdom that has guided you in life? Um, yeah, this seems a really good question. Um, there's a lot to pick from. The thing that I was thinking about um, that came to mind First thing that comes to mind with this is, I don't know if it's especially Jewish, but it was like a question that was posed to me or a statement I should pay that was posed to me when I was along my Jewish journey. And I was really sort of like dragging my feet. I was reluctant. I don't want to do this, but I do want to do this. And this whole like back and forth about it. And uh, the way it was presented to me was um, actually from Rabbi Sine Moore. And he said to me, look, you're never going to believe something exactly 100%. 100, 100, 100 percent. There's always going to be this little thing of that. You can believe something 99.9999 percent of the way, but there's always going to be something that's going to make you question that's going to have some element of doubt, that sort of thing. Um, and like just reframing things for me in that way, I think I was at the time having suffering a bit from this sort of black and white thinking. It has to be this or it has to be this. And I can't do this unless I know all the answers about this. Um and just sort of shifting that mindset to say like, okay, it's okay to take one step forward, even if I don't have all the answers. It's okay to like take one step in this direction, even though I'm not sure where it's going to lead me or what's going to be. Because look, if it's not the right direction, I can always redirect myself. And I think, you know, I don't know if that's uh, especially Jewish or if it's out community people, but I think just having that idea breaks you free of this very black and white thinking And helps you just move forward. And I think it also relates to, you know, like this whole topic that we're talking about in terms of leadership, finding your, like finding your passion, finding your mission. What are you supposed to do in life? And I think many people suffer from this sort of like fear of what if. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think sometimes we just need to take a step in the direction and know that you can always take a step the other direction if it doesn't work out. Yeah. No, and my wife says this thing to me all the time. She she talks about like trying it on, like a piece of clothing. Mm -hmm. Like take it off. 
<laughs> and um, I think it's very important. I what I would love to hear is: is there anything in particular that, where that's come up? You know, even beyond the the initial question you were asking Rabbi Stein, but just is that something that's come up for you and 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 you've used throughout, whether it's in your career or your personal life, mm. a, a decision that you weren't sure one hundred percent, but you tried it out, and whether it worked or not, it it helped you just move forward and not get stuck. Right. So definitely in my like sort of, I would say personal life Jewish observance that helped me a lot because there was a lot of times when I just would not move forward on something because it's like I wanted to, but I was scared because of X, Y, and Z. Mm. And just taking a little step helped me go, it's okay. We're just focusing on this right now. And we're just focusing on this right now and doing things sort of, as they say, day at a time, one step at a time, that sort of thing. It definitely helped there. I think also in my work life, I do tend to suffer from this sort of overthinking thing when I'm sure some people really do as well. Oh, it has to be this. And maybe I should focus on this. And maybe I should do this. And it's really helpful sometimes to just stop and say, just try it. I think that um, we think things need to be perfect before we do it. You know, there's a saying like done is better than perfect or whatever. Um, and especially when it comes to work or initiatives you want to start, it doesn't even have to be work, but like something you want to do, a dream that you have. And many of us just don't act on it. Um, you know, I've heard like this phrase before for many people talking about Jeff Bezos at Amazon or something like that. Like the difference between him and everyone else who had that idea, because for sure he's not the only person who had this idea, was he actually did it. Hmm. Right. And sometimes we just need to say, OK, just get out there and do it, whether it's like a podcast. Maybe you don't have all the professional equipment. But you just need to start recording something and putting it up there, you know, um, or other things as well. So I, for sure, I think that that concept um, has been helpful in many ways and you can implement it in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I had uh, I, I used to teach a class on how to launch a podcast in, in America. <laughs> so I'd done I'd produced a couple of them and um, and it was like the funniest thing. All these people would buy the best microphone. And like make sure the camera is set up <laughs> and they had this software online. They spend months, you know, and like, yeah. the first episode never came out. <laughs> it was just like, you know, you could get very obsessive with trying to like set yourself up to be perfect and the the job never gets done. Um, so I totally, I totally yeah, relate to that. Exactly. Um, this might be a hard question to ask because it sounded like a very good piece of advice but the next question is what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given um so i guess i would connect that to like the answer i gave before because that also like as much as it was jewish wisdom but it also felt like advice right in terms of like how to move forward how to go that sort of thing um well i feel looking for jewish advice or just general advice this one could be any advice any type of if you advice. Have either Jewish wisdom you'd like to share. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, like, um, I don't know if it's like one line or one piece of specific advice, but particularly when I was thinking of starting my business, um, I had a lot of like going back and forth, like, oh, can I make it and can I do it? I guess it's all this along these same lines of like mm -hmm. uh, overthinking things, right? But there was a lot for a long time, like I really wanted to do it and I thought that it would be a good move for me, but I was so scared and I kept going to people for validation. Should I do it here and should I do it there? Um, what is it, you know, talking to other business owners, like, can I do this and what do you think? But like ultimately, like anyone giving you advice can't really tell you what's going to be. You can go to a bunch of different businesses and um, and try and get some validation for them. Oh, they can make it, but I can make it, that sort of thing. But um, I do remember like just in that time, most people being like, not most people, the most powerful like thing that was shared to me, and it sounds really similar to this, you know, Jewish wisdom I got, I could say, which is like, you just have to try it. Like, mm -hmm. You just have to take a step in the direction. I feel like there's this like theme now that I didn't realize maybe it was in my life, but I'm sure that maybe it's a theme in my life. But and you just have to try it, not overthink it. Give it a shot. Um, you know, there's that one saying like you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take or something like that. You know, now it doesn't mean you should take crazy risks. You know that like um, I'm not condoning that that you know maybe difficult for you or your family or that sort of thing, but there is value in simply trying things and simply sampling things um, and 
you know, I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to anyone listening, but trying not to overthink it so much. Sure. Do you find that when you took that first step and and whatever you had worked out with the plan that you talked to all the other business owners, this is what I'm going to do and this is how it's going to look. But then looking back a year later, it was completely not what you expected. Or was it mm. like, because one of the reasons, right, taking a step can be helpful is that sometimes you don't know what it's going to look like, but you won't see it until you start moving towards towards that pathway. Did you find that to be the case right. for you? So, I mean, the way that I did it anyways was probably like, I'm talking about it like it was some huge risk, but I did it in a very safe way. Like I had my salary job. I went part time. I started freelancing and then slowly, slowly as the freelancing options like came in, then I eventually like, you know, quit my job. So I did it in a very like safe way. Um, But I, I know that I have spoken to a bunch of people that have like tried to launch video businesses and it did not work for them. And I think like sometimes... I don't know, like I take for granted the fact that like, oh, it just worked. Now, that doesn't mean I didn't work hard. I worked very hard to like, you know, do everything I needed to do. But like, um, I don't feel like I took any like huge gigantic risks. And I, it's not really something like we've talked about, like in the podcast until now that I've like brought up. But I do think it is important to when you look at the successes that have come in your life. And you're not really sure like how they came or where they came or whatever. Like personally, I do believe that like um there is like a spiritual aspect to it as in you know like perhaps this really is what i'm supposed to do and god did help me succeed i don't know like everyone can think about it in the way that like makes sense for them but i think that it's also important to realize like that um our success doesn't 100 percent solely come from us um maybe it's because it's what you're supposed to be doing maybe you are naturally good at it or maybe you're naturally good at it because it's what you're supposed to be doing um and so there is that aspect as well that like yes we can sit here and talk about all the different ways and analyze the different ways that uh i've been successful other than people have been successful or how these things launch but i think there's also an element that like i don't know if you find this in the podcast when you talk to people um but like for many many successful people um they talk about how like I don't know, things just kind of took off and it didn't necessarily have to do with them all the time. I won't say that about every single person. I don't want people listening to like, sure. that can guess themselves. If it's not successful at this moment, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing it. But um, I think that there is that element as well. Some things are in our control and some things really are not. Yeah, and and you said there that you don't condone people taking huge risks necessarily. <laughs> and the pathway you took, wasn't taking huge risks, but it worked out. I don't think there's anything glorious about, you know, dropping your job and completely like, you know, jumping (laughs) in the deep end. If you want something to work out, doing it in a healthy way makes a lot of sense. So I, 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 right, right. No, that definitely resonates. Okay. And the last question is, what do you think the key is to realizing your potential? I mean, I am. I don't think it's one thing. For me, it's like multiple things. So I think, first of all, um, it takes inner work. It takes on your own, really like listening to yourself and trying to understand like, what am I good at? What do I like? You don't have to be naturally good at something for it to be something that is going to like take you into the next step in life. But I think there has to be sort of this combination of you know, what are some of your natural abilities? What do you actually enjoy doing? And then I think also the missing piece that not everyone focuses on is based on your life, your lifestyle, all these other things, what is going to work well. I definitely had this experience with filmmaking when I went to school. There was a, like, I went to great school that had a lot, a lot of training in how you do this and how you make connections. And they tried to set you up with all these internships and did lots of amazing things. But there was zero toss about what does the reality of this job look like for you (laughs) maybe some people do not want to spend 18 hours a day on set maybe they want to have kids or maybe they want to you know work lighter i don't know like i think there's this assumption that everyone gets it because why would you get into such a competitive field unless you wanted to dedicate your whole life to it but you know our brains and our personalities are so different when we're young that we can't always like predict what we want it to be like in the future so i think all of that has to be paired with like looking at your life and your lifestyle and what you want out of life outside of your career, outside of, you know, your finding your mission and life, I guess. 
Um, and like, how does that pair with that? And mm. I think that that sort of like reality mixed with our inner desire um, to what we want to do in life when they come together. So it can be great. Okay. Thank you so much. This has really been amazing, inspiring. I have a lot of food for thought and I really appreciate you taking the time. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it.